Hi, it's Jason from Skinny R&D, and today we're going to talk about different ways to use the output of the 555 timer. Last week what we did is we took a look at how the 555 timer works. If you missed that tutorial, you can go back to part one. I will have a link down in the description. Great, so let's get started. So this should look pretty familiar from the last video. We talked about how the 555 timer operates and eventually how we get this output voltage where the output goes from high to low. Uh, when it goes low, it's pretty much zero volts. When it goes high, we say that the, the voltage on the high side is 7.3 volts. We also said that we could figure out how often this occurs by looking at this frequency, F equals 1.44 divided by all of these things. We also said how these resistors and this capacitor control how often this transition occurs. So let's take a look and see what we can do with that output. So in the application that I showed you in the other video, I told you I was making a lens detector, and all it does is really just have these blinking lights. Because of that, I'm going to show you two ways at which you can get kind of this blinking light effect using the type 555 timer, but you can take these two uh, ways of playing with the output and apply it to all different types of circuits. So the first thing you can do with the output stage is you can take and hook these directly to some LEDs. So let's pretend that we have a 9-volt feed up here. Then we're going to have ground for our circuit down here at the bottom. So let's put some LEDs in here. The next thing that we're going to want is a couple of resistors to be able to uh, control the current on these. So we'll feed our output to it. So according to what we talked about before, like we said, the output of this is going to be a low, then a high, then a low, then a high. So the way this circuit is going to work is when the output stage here goes to zero or is connected up to ground, then you're going to have this 9 volts that's going to flow through this LED. This LED drops about uh, somewhere around the order of 1.9 volts of that voltage. Then you're going to have the rest of that voltage drop across R1. And then instead of going this way to ground, well, there's some things in the way. There's a resistor here, an LED here. It's much quicker for this pathway to go this direction and go to ground through the output stage. So what you're going to have is this LED is going to light up, but no power is going to get to this LED. So only this LED will turn on. On the opposite end, let's say the output stage goes high and it's outputting 7.3 volts. So we have 7.3 volts here. It's going to flow this direction. It can't flow this way because this LED is going to block the DC voltage from going that direction. But instead, it's going to go towards ground, which would be this direction. So it's going to pass through this resistor. It's going to pass through this LED and go to ground. The LED that I'm about to show you in a second, uh, this is a green LED, and it has a, a voltage drop of somewhere around 2.1 volts. So just so you kind of get a sense of what I'm about to show you, this one up here is a red LED. Red LED. This one at the bottom is a, is a green LED. One of the things you might ask yourself is, is if there's 7.3 volts here and there's 9 volts up here, uh, why doesn't this LED come on anyway? Well, if we take a look at this, there would be 7.3 volts at this point, 9 volts at this point. So that's a difference of 1.7 volts. This LED doesn't even turn on until it gets to 1.9 volts. And so the, the problem is you don't really have enough juice to let this LED trip itself and, and turn on. What you end up with is you end up with an alternating LED uh, light-up scheme. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So here's the actual circuit. Uh, this is all the stuff that we talked about last week. The main thing is this. This is the output stage. I have a purple wire here that's leading uh, to the middle of these two resistors, just like we had on our circuit. And when I turn this on, I've got 9 volts applied to it. We have this LED that will light up, then this LED that will light up. This is really good if you need some way of turning one thing on, then another thing on. And so you did this flip-flop functionality. You might not want this functionality. Maybe you just want something that's going to turn on an LED on and off, or maybe you're using this not for LEDs at all, and you want this uh, chip to be able to control the timing for something else. Or maybe you want this chip to turn something on and off, but you don't want it to turn off directly. You don't want the 555 timer to be sourcing and syncing the voltage itself. Maybe you want to use the 555 timer as a control mechanism. 
So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So there's another way to approach this. Let's say we have our 9 volt source up here again. And we want to control, uh, say, anything really, but in this case we'll say LEDs again. And this time let's say we want to control, uh, I don't know, like a string of LEDs. So there are LEDs. We need some sort of resistor in there to help control the current. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert something else. I'm going to insert a transistor. We're going to take and hook the base of that transistor to the output stage. So how is this different? What is this going to do for us? Well, one, we're not going to have the alternating uh, lights. What we're going to do is we're going to get a steady blink from both LEDs. But now what we're doing is we're not sourcing and syncing the current from the output stage. What we're doing is we're using the output stage as a control mechanism for the current flow of another circuit. So really this circuit, I'm using LEDs, but it doesn't have to be LEDs. It could be any number of things that you want to turn off and on at a regular interval. So the way this would work is when you have a low in the output stage, then there's no voltage really coming to this base. So this transistor is acting sort of like a, a gateway for the current here and it's going to keep current from flowing from this 9 volt source to ground and, and thus keeping the LEDs from powering on. When you have a high on the output stage, then this base is going to uh, allow current to flow through the transistor. When that happens, both LEDs are going to turn on and the current's going to flow from the 9 volt source all the way down to ground. Then this transition is just going to continue to happen over and over again. This is what I did for my uh, project here. Uh, this is what I did for my project. One, because I didn't want alternating LEDs. I wanted a steady blink on all the LEDs. Another thing is the output stage has a limitation on the amount of current that can be drawn through it or drawn out of it. I, it According to the data sheet, at 15 volts is 200 milliamps. If the voltage is lower, sometimes that uh, amount of current can be limited to 100 milliamps. There is a limitation on the amount of current that can flow uh, in or out of this output stage. There's one more thing that you need to think about when you're doing this. You need to have one more resistor in here, all right, this on, on this output stage, because when you're sourcing voltage out of here and it turns on, Okay, you don't want just uh, all of this output voltage to flow through here and then find its way to ground. It kind of, <laughs> it really messes things up. So one of the things that you might want to do is to come in here and place a resistor on the output stage. In my case, I used a, a 10 kilo ohm resistor because all I want this voltage to do is turn this transistor on and off. I don't need it to power anything. So I don't need a lot of current uh, to come out of the output stage or to be pulled from the output stage. So what I did was I limited that pretty heavily with this 10K resistor. And so now all the output stage is doing is turning this on and off and I don't have to worry about too much current being drawn out of it. And this is how it works when you have the transistor in line. In this case, I've replaced my uh, purple uh, wire here with a 10K resistor. It's feeding into the base of this transistor. We're taking our voltage from the power rail. It's powering up these two LEDs. You've got a resistor here to control current, and then this green wire is punching the ground. Also, you'll notice that in both examples, the LEDs were blinking kind of slow. That's because I'm using a 2 mega ohm uh, potentiometer here. I used the formula in order to determine just uh, how often I wanted this to blink. In a following video, we're going to discuss uh, how we go about determining the resistances and the capacitances that we use in order to uh, find the frequency that we like. So the whole point of this was kind of to show you two different ways to use the output on the 555. You can use uh, that triple five timer to sync and source your circuit itself so that you're able to control uh, your entire project that way. However, what you can also do is you can use the 555 timer as a control mechanism for another circuit. So hopefully those two ways are helpful for you. There are more ways you could use a 555 timer. Uh, leave a comment if you'd like to suggest one. Um, I've love to look into it. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.